So we have some pretty interesting details regarding thinner OLED panels for future iPads and also these panels offering unrivaled picture quality, so let's delve into it. So this comes from the Aleka Pretty Credible Source and they say final prototypes of OLED iPads are currently in the works and they're being produced by Korean suppliers LG and Samsung. Now allegedly Apple's focusing on two things, the first thing being the weight Apple's apparently using a new dry etching process that significantly reduces the weight and because the display is so thin, Apple suppliers are using a special coating on top that improves the durability of these panels. Now this allegedly has not been used on the iPhone yet and so this is going to be a first for the iPads and you might be wondering why is Apple going through all this effort to give us lighter panels with the iPads and I can only think of one reason and that is we're getting a larger model pretty soon. You see as far as I know OLED is a lot lighter than LCD and mini LEDs so if Apple was to keep the current sizes, regular OLED tech they already use with the iPhones would be sufficient. However, the fact they're going through this process of using a new dry etching process, I think that does give us a clue that yes, we're getting larger iPads and of course this has been mentioned by many sources in the past, though I do want to mention that Ross Young still believes the larger iPad is going to have LCD and no ProMotion, so that seems to be a larger version of the iPad Air, not the Pros. And while yes, I know that Ross Young's a very credible source, but that makes no sense. Why would Apple give us a larger display with the iPad Air range? Surely the Pro should offer the biggest display on the market, and I'm sure those who do artwork on the iPad would appreciate a rich 14 inch or 15 inch OLED panel with ProMotion instead of regular LCD. So yes, personally I still think the iPad Pros are going to see the display increase and maybe the 12.9 inch size comes down to the iPad Air range instead. Anyways, as for the other focus with this panel of course, that is the image quality since Mini LED has set quite a high bar for iPad displays and so this OLED panel has to be better than that and so of course I'm expecting improvements to the brightness, contrast ratio and the colours in general. And yeah, generally you can't beat the deep blacks of OLED and so I do think for the most part these displays are going to be a massive upgrade. And also do remember that with OLED we are going to see LTPO tech which means like the iPhones, the iPads should also go down to 1Hz giving us better battery life. And by the way, for those concerned about burn-in, obviously do remember these are going to be dual stack OLEDs and so that means there's a four times improvement with the longevity of these panels compared to the iPhone displays. That's a major increase and it makes sense because many of us do hold on to iPads way longer than our iPhones. Anyways, regarding the release of these iPads, expect that in 2024, so that means the next refresh after the M2 iPad Pros should get OLED. Oh and by the way, this OLED tech is coming to the Max. The Ross Young once again confusingly says the MacBook Air is going to be the first Mac with OLED, which makes no sense because these displays are going to be better than mini LEDs, so giving it to the Pros makes the most sense. Also for the most part, the Air does not get the cutting edge tech first, it usually comes to the MacBook Pros first and then of course it trickles down to the Air, for example the new design, we just saw that with the M2 refresh, but of course the MacBook Pros already got the major refresh. So yes, once again I think Ross is wrong and the first Macs with OLED panels are going to be the MacBook Pros. Anyways, let's delve into your comments regarding future iPads. So C. Daub says, All iPadOS 16 software functions should work backwards to A12 devices that are more than powerful enough. And yes, I do for the most part agree with this because the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros are very powerful tablets and should support Stage Manager to be honest. Now yes, I know some of you guys might say that Stage Manager does need memory swap and that's only available on the M1 iPads, but do remember the 64GB iPad Air 5 does not have that and yet it does still support the feature, so I do think Apple could have given our Stage Manager with those older iPad Pros and if needed, they could have restricted the number of apps you could open on those older devices. 
But to restrict the feature completely and not give it to those older iPads does kind of suck, especially when some consumers have spent a lot of money on 5.12 and 1TB versions of the 2020 iPad Pro. But then again, I guess I can't blame Apple because the 2018 iPad Pro was peak iPad and so many consumers really did not have much of an incentive to upgrade. But now, of course, with the M1 exclusive features, there is a reason to get the new iPads. So Joe does want the bezels to be thinner with the iPads and says that he mostly uses it with a magic keyboard. So of course, since he's not touching the display, the bezels do look goofy. And actually I did not consider that. That is a fair point. And I guess that could be Apple's justification for giving us thinner bezels with the iPad. So Nick Jr. says, I want OLED for the M2 slash M3 iPad Pro 11 inch. And yeah, I think this is going to be the case with the M3 version because we should see iPads with OLED tech as soon as 2023 or 2024. So yes, we should see this happen pretty soon. And personally, I'm pretty hyped about this because obviously the 11 inch size missed out on the mini LED tech but this should give you twice the brightness and four times the longevity compared to mini LED. So this should be a pretty massive upgrade. So talking about the iPad Pros with OLED, Eric says he wants them to be 8K. Now this personally feels completely overkill because I doubt you're gonna see much of a difference with an 8K panel on these iPads. 8K really only makes sense on larger panels like TVs. And also do remember 8K would absolutely obliterate the battery life of these iPads. So yeah, personally, I don't think we need this. The resolution we currently have is more than fine. So Opus Digital Audio says, the notch is stupid and yes, when it comes to the iPads, the notch would be a stupid addition because it would be a regression from the current design. And so, yeah, I really hope we don't see a notch on any future iPads. Anyways, that's about it for the comments, guys. But of course, let me know in the comments below what's your thoughts regarding these new iPads. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the above on details regarding the iPhone 14 series. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya, peeps.